thank you for joining us today. So we'll be starting up the session right now. All right. Um, thank you everyone for joining us again. And um, this on this event team, Transforming Your Missions at Scale with Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit. And this is brought to you by Reliance Info Systems in collaboration with the Nigerian Network of NGOs. So my name is Good Luck and um, I'm a Customer Excellence Strategist. Sorry. I'm a Customer Excellence Strategist with Reliance Info Systems and I'll be your anchor for today. So, um, thank you. Uh, so on our agenda for today, um, first of all, we have what we call our housekeeping rules, and this rule will help us to achieve a successful event. And for today, we'll be starting off that um, to let you know that this presentation will be recorded and be made available on demand. Also, all our attendees will be muted and videos will be turned off to be able to maintain decorum. However, if you have any questions at all, any clarification that you seek, and you have queries during the course of this presentation, please feel free to use the chat window drop all your queries and we do better to answer them. So on this webinar, I have with me the communications officer for the Nigerian Network of NGOs, Oyin Damola Aramide, and I'll quickly hand over to her to speak on the TSI initiative. Um, Oyin Damola, all right, okay, um, please give us a second. Hello, good luck. Thank you so much for uh, introducing me and bringing me on. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, and I bring greetings from the executive director of the Nigeria Network of NGOs. I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay. Great. Yes, I can see you. Yes. Good to have you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Um, last year, we had the opportunity of um, being introduced to some Microsoft Cloud um, computing services uh, by the Reliance team uh, at um, a webinar like this that we had in partnership with. Reliance, um, InfoSystem, and Microsoft. And um, it's lovely to be able to, you know, again this year, um, have this kind of webinar, gather civil society organizations together and train us on how we can access Microsoft uh, cloud services. We know how very important technology is for uh, the work that we do today, generally, and especially for the work of nonprofit organizations and how we reach our beneficiaries and, and things like that. And it's amazing, you know, that we have the opportunity of getting trainings like this uh, that help us understand what we are working with, how we can better access services like um, Microsoft has uh, in place at, you know, very enviable um, costs. You know, being non-profit organization, so it's a, it's a, it's a laudable um, uh, achievement that uh, Microsoft um, has out there, and we're excited uh, as Nigeria Network of NGOs to be able to bring our members and civil society organizations that we have contacts with to be able to uh, bring them to this kind of webinar. Uh, I would leave um, participants with this charge and say that please. Um, access the information that you'll be getting from this webinar and uh, figure out ways um, how you can um, efficiently um, access the information that you'll be getting, the knowledge that you'll be getting from this webinar and be able to use them uh, to carry out uh, the, the necessary um, work, actions that you need to carry out for your organization in a way that helps you uh, um, achieve your vision and your mission as organizations. Thank you so much. And uh, for the next 15 minutes, now, uh, this is going to be an exciting learning experience. Thank you. Good luck. I hand it over back to you. All right. Thank you for that wonderful insight. Uh, moving on. So we also have my, uh, Microsoft Solution Expert, Jennifer and Ramona, and both of them will be facilitating these uh, sessions with me. So moving on as a guide for this webinar, first I'll begin with an introduction of who we are at Reliance Info Systems, and then I will talk about what we do and why we do what we do. Then I'll dive uh, into the webinar proper, starting from um, the Tech for Social Impact vision, where we get to examine how Microsoft Cloud is providing opportunities, tools, and modern support for you know nonprofit launch and nonprofit offerings. Then we try to translate it to improve how it improves our productivity, collaboration, and security. So um, then we go straight into the uh, uh, fundraising and engagement demonstration where you get to see how this platform works, what you start to benefit from it, then the volunteer management, then after which we talk about the capacity building part of it, like um, the Microsoft community training. Then after that, we will take all your questions, then um, we we'll do justice to them. So moving on, we'll be starting off with the introduction part. So Reliance Info Systems, we are an ICT organization. We are a leading one for that. So, and we are 
third quarter in Canada. However, we have um, fiscal footprints uh, in 10 countries, which includes Botswana, Kenya, um, Ghana, UAE, United Kingdom, Pakistan, Egypt, South Africa, and Nigeria. However, we also have um, digital footprints across uh, 50 other countries. What we basically do is we help organizations to you know, deliver their business goals by leveraging on cutting edge technologies. So as an organization, we are driven by what we call our success outcome philosophy. So um, when we talk about our uh, success outcome philosophy here, we, we are built around, um, we build our operations around winning with our customers. However, we don't just see you as our customer, we see you as our partners, where we see your pain point as our own pain point and uh, your success story as our success story. So it is safe to say that uh, at Reliance Info Systems, we measure our success by the quantum of the progress we have helped you to achieve. So um, moving on, we have uh, our... Um, with this philosophy, we have our achievements and we've been able to grow um, to become a three time winner of the Microsoft Partner of the Year. And uh, at the same time, we also won the Sophos Country Partner of the Year twice. However, we also gained recognition ag across other business organizations um, for our contributions in the IT space. Then, um, at Reliance for Systems, with regards to our expertise, we have been acknowledged as the Microsoft Solution Partner for all six of its um, primary solution areas. Additionally, we have obtained specialization in these areas, indicating that uh, we possess the necessary knowledge and experience to assist you in enhancing your nonprofit endeavors and at the same time helping you to achieve more favorable outcomes. So this is to say that you can definitely rely on us to help you um, to help you deliver quality uh, solutions. So we have what we call our success pillars. I will quickly touch on these three of them. The business transformation here, we basically help you to assist your um, to transform your business digitally, thereby you know lowering your cost, improving your efficiency, and maximizing your productivity. Then we have the operational excellence. You see, we identify operational excellence to be the way people, data, systems, and processes they interlace with each other to you know achieve productivity. Then we have protection assurance. So you see, we understand that every organization wants to protect their data, protect their organization at last. Here we sell rest of mind as a service. And uh, moving on, we also have um, the plunge smile. So basically, our involvement um, in the nonprofit sector is also significant here. So um, we have effectively uh, utilized Microsoft Cloud technologies to help um, address poverty and hunger issues under our plunge smile uh, 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 branch so we have um we've been able to promote the well-being of citizens and you know improve educational opportunities so we've we've been able to bring um uh, we are bringing this uh, message of achieving more through the um use of microsoft cloud to you with the aim of you know making a substantial impact in um in your collaborations or in your missions so before we go into the presentation proper i'll be dropping uh, a pull question and i appreciate it so much if you give it an honest response and like i mentioned earlier on if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to use the chat window, drop all your questions and we'll do it to answer them. So moving on to TSI program, I would like to share with you more about our efforts to create a positive impact for um, people and the planet at large. Uh, as you can see, given the multitude of um, challenges facing the world today, which includes global climate change, economic instability, food shortages, record number of refugees, natural disasters, and um, the impact of the outbreaks on the way we work and the way we provide services to beneficiaries, it is very, very clear that we are dealing with a wide range of complex issues and it's to this end that uh, Microsoft created Tech for Social Impact, you know, to be able to empower um, every non-profit and um, humanitarian organization to accelerate their social good. So moving on, we have a new business model and um, but I'll quickly speak on this new business model for the TSI. So um, TSI, uh, that's the Tech for Social Impact, is committed to helping you in following ways, um, the affordable technology and solutions. So you see this includes the ability to help nonprofits get um, access to best practices, um, reference arch architectures, and faster data insights. Then um, we have the capacity building. So you see, just delivering technology isn't the whole answer. We also recognize that capacity building is um, often the key uh, to successful adoption of new technology. That's why we are committed to helping organizations like yours get access to uh, training and certifications to improve your digital skills. Then we have the partner ecosystem. You see TSI leverages our, um, leverages on tens of thousands of commercial partners to, to um, create a healthy ecosystem for, um, for organizations like you. So, uh, and this is, um, 
this um, le ecosystem will be able to help you, you know, deliver solutions and services designed specifically for um, non-profit sectors like you. So we have the um, social investment model. So um, when we talk about this uh, social investment model, additional funds that remain after covering costs are invested back into the uh, team and, and is allocated to charitable contributions. So moving on, I know you'll be wondering what this uh, Microsoft offers for NGOs, what it uh, entails. So when we talk about Microsoft offers for NGOs, we talk about um, Microsoft making available grants and donations specifically for uh, you. And if you are wondering uh, what does this cost and how do I get started, just have it in mind that uh, Microsoft is committing to is committed to uh, making it easier for you to join her. And this is with several offers and resources that can make the cloud more affordable, more accessible and relevant to your Mission. So, and it comes in forms of donations and discounts exclusively for you. So, you see, this offer is uh, categorized into four areas. We have the modern work. So, first, the, the modern work. Um, Modern Workplace offers, uh, uh, it provides you with productivity solutions and the latest uh, Windows operating system. So, and this um, uh, productivity solutions comes under Microsoft 365 Business Premium. And under it, you have grants of up to 10 seats. And um, from the 11th, when, I, when we talk about 10 seats, you talk about 10 licenses. And then from the 11th one, you get to pay $5 per user for, per month. Then the Windows 11, you have grant of up to 50. So uh, from the 51st person, you get 75% discount. So we have the business applications and low code uh, platform. So here, if you want to be able to you know, analyze and visualize your data, be able to create dashboards, you can subscribe to use the Power BI Pro and it's heavily discounted at uh, three dollar per user per month so you see in terms of your business applications you can take advantage of the low code which um which is easier to use maybe if you want to build or design applications for yourself or for your organization with just a simple drag and drop experience you can be able to build something that will help you do away with manual manual processes so um here you have um for power apps you have grants of up to 10 uh licenses then from the 11 you get to pay uh two dollar fifty cents per app by user per month so in terms of dynamic tricks is five cells you see as a non-profit organization you want to be able to manage information around your vendors your volunteers and your you know your interactions with each of these individuals or even your stakeholders so you want to be able to you know monitor and manage the opportunities that arise from all of them so in this case you can leverage the dynamic tricks is five sales enterprise and get a grant of up to uh, five licenses i understand that you want to be able to create a journey for all of your stakeholders so that you know they they are up to date with information. So as a non-profit per month of these um licenses, you get to pay three hundred and seventy five dollars. Yes, I understand now that um some people may be thinking it's much, but when you consider the commercial price of um uh, one thousand five hundred dollars, which is seventy five percent discounting grants, you realize that this is cheaply available for the take. So for um. Moving on to Azure, you have three thousand five hundred uh, dollar credits uh, uh, annually given to you for uh, for you to be able to host your uh, applications in the cloud, or it may, it gives you the uh, the opportunity to you know do anything you want to do um, on the Azure cloud um, solutions. So we have um. And this includes um, on the onboarding concierge. So moving on, we have the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit Basic Plan. So this one is totally free for you. You have um, uh, Outlook for it under it, uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Then we have the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit Standard Plan, which is $750 and um, $2,000 per month, depending on your sizes. So moving on, I understand that um, you want to know how to take advantage of these um, non-profit offers. So here, Microsoft needs to validate that the organization to which they are extending these uh, discounted offers and grants are non-for-profit organization, not just any other organization. So for that reason, Microsoft has created a portal for you where um, non-for-profit organizations around the world register their interest, uh, in, register their interest in the office, and Microsoft gets to validate that you qualify for this grant and then give you the discounted technology and services that you qualify for. So I will be posting the link to the site and I'm encouraging you during this session, visit that site and also get to register and uh, input all your documents and uh, be able to you know, find out if you're eligible, eligible for these um, uh, offers. However, just to mention, Jared, 
you can see two signs. We have the register now and the sign in. So when you click on this link and it takes you to register now, have it um, please. If you have, if you already have a domain in Microsoft, maybe you have, you've already created accounts uh, in Microsoft. Please just sign in, fill in your uh, your your all the necessary documents requested, then you submit there. But if you don't have any domain, uh, a Microsoft domain, or you don't have any Microsoft account, then you click on the register now and try to fill in all the uh, necessary documents and you, you'll be registered. So however, if you need um, guidance from us in getting you started, we can do so after this session. We can have a one on one session with you. And um, for that, you can reach you can reach out to us via the email address I'll be dropping now so that um, we can be able to set up a meeting with you. So moving on, I made mention of some of these offers that are the falls under the Microsoft um, offers for you. So I'll quickly touch on them so you get to see um, what this offer entails and how you stand to benefit from it. So moving on, I'll be starting, on, I'll be starting with the modern workplace. And this modern workplace, we have Microsoft 365 falling under it. So you see, in, uh, in enabling and empowering NGOs to stay productive, um, Microsoft is providing Microsoft 365, um, which is a cloud platform that enables you to stay productive and shows that you're able to collaborate effectively with your employees and stakeholders. So you see, it provides you with applications such as Microsoft Teams, which um, this Microsoft Teams sits on four pillars, which are includes the chat, meet, and when I talk about meet, I mean meeting and um, shared documents and then um, be able to make calls. So when we talk about um, meeting exactly, we talk about hybrid meetings, being able to have a mixture of online and physical meetings or even virtual uh, virtual meetings, whether within your organization or even outside your organization. So then we have the chat part. So here we understand that you want to you want to enjoy the persistent chatting that you have already created in WhatsApp. Yes, you can also do the same thing using the Microsoft Teams. So it gives you the ability to you know create that personalized interactive experiences. Then we talk about um collaboration. So Microsoft Teams provides you with a platform where you can, you know, prepare your documents, uh, which means two, three or four, even more than four people can go author uh, a document. So we understand that um, most times you want to, you are working on your proposals or a uh, grant writing and all that. Microsoft Teams gives you the ability to do that. And you can even make presentations to be able to show what you're working on, like I'm doing currently. Then we have um, the call part of it. You see, you can call one another within your organization. You can also even uh, with some added services, you can call international lines. However, you have various applications that um, like SharePoint, OneDrive and various um, Office apps like Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint, all which are embedded within Microsoft 365 to enhance your collaboration. So it will also be able to you know, support you stay um, organized during your calendar services and be able to connect with your stakeholders using the email facility. Sorry about that. I'm sure um, some of us on this call, we probably use Gmail or Yahoo and you know the likes of it. So Microsoft brings so much value to you, um, which is not, you can't you can't find it in some of these um, open source email services, such as um, you being able to protect your data and um, the rest of it. So you also have defenses against cyber threats, yes, and you are able to ensure that all of your devices um, all of your um, documents from wherever you access them, uh, they are secure, whether on your mobile devices or your laptops, or your laptops or even your iPad. So with this, um, so with this, uh, Microsoft is empowering organizations like you to, you know, stay connected and be able to be more productive. And also it's empowering you to, you know, um, be able to do your hybrid work environment, which is now becoming the new um, global norm. So moving on, I made mention of the cyber threat and security. So here um, we have Microsoft 365 security. And with this Microsoft 365 security embedded in your solution, you are empowered. So um, we have uh, four layers of this security, the identity, device, application, and document security. So I'll just um, explain uh, each of these security. So with the identity uh, security embedded in, in this solution, you're able to ensure that at every point in time, you're able to identify that the right user that has access to the right resources within your organization. And you see this is made possible through functionalities like multi-factor authentication, which um, 
it ensures that maybe uh, a token is sent to a phone or um, uh, to your um, a device and this number you get to enter it to your um, laptop or just for the authorization. And even when your password is compromised, the other layers of, of, the, uh, um, of authentication like self-service password reset, in, you know, it ensures that you can validate and authenticate yourself at the right as, um, as a direct um, user to that resources. Then we have the device security. So I mean, most of us in our organization, we access our data using mobile phones, laptops, or even tablets. But you see, um, with this service embedded in, uh, in, in this solution, Microsoft shows that you are, you, are, you are secure. So your data is secured across all of these, uh, all of these devices. So even in case of stolen um, device, the security, uh, sec the security services, it ensures that you are able to do a remote swipe of your data, which um, at the same time ensures that all your data is not accessible to the person who stole it or to the um, the uh, to the place where you lost it. So we have the application security. I understand that. Um, for a smooth and successful mission in your organization, we all run various applications like um, email, communication applications, and even um, business applications. So we may want to prevent um, ransomware attacks and be able to ensure that our data is protected. This also entails that Microsoft provides uh, that level of security to which you are looking for. Then we have the document security. Uh, yeah, of course, with a, um, with a document, you want to be able to uh, ensure access to uh, sensitive documents is restricted. You want to you want to be able to classify your document as confidential. And um, yes, Microsoft gives you that um, ability to be able to you know, classify your document as confidential. So moving on, we have the Azure part of it. Yes, Azure is one of the um, offers you get from Microsoft. So as nonprofits today, they are facing more uh, security risks than before. And it, this can be seen by the impact of the recent um, Nobelium attack on USAID. So it's safe to say that um, we understand um, the collection of data that nonprofits um, collect, and, uh, which includes um, Data, data from their constituents, from employees, volunteers, beneficiaries, and you know, um, down to their donors. So much of these sensitive data include um, health information, credit card, billing details, social security numbers, and you know, other government IDs. So we understand that this data must be secured to be able to maintain the integrity of nonprofit uh, operations. And I'll quickly explain how. Um, we can do all this. So we have the app innovation on the Azure uh, Azure services. So this here, we um, we can build your website. You can build your website on Azure, and the value of that is that it offers you more protection than you ever um, you have on any of the um, hosting platforms like the GoDaddy. And you can also be empowered to you know develop low code applications to be able to meet your um, work demands. Then also Microsoft provides three thousand five hundred grants of um, credits which I've explained, which I made mention earlier on, which can help you leverage the uh, cloud and reduce the cost associated with maintaining your IT infrastructure. So you and um, also you also get expert guidance from partners like us who are also here to you know provide you walk you through um, everything that has to do with app innovation, migrating your um, workloads to the cloud and you know and your cloud transformation journey in total. So we will assist you with all the planning and uh, the migration process. So here, it is important to know that migrating to the cloud also ensures that you avoid disruptions that are associated with uh, server downtime. So moving on, we have the data analytics part of the Azure. So yes, Synapse is Microsoft Azure Analytics Data Warehouse. So uh, in today's world, organizations, both um, nonprofits and the ones that are different organizations, we generate large amounts of data, such as um, employee data, employee impact, uh, uh, mission impact data, volunteer management, and, and the rest. So it's crucial to have a strong data warehouse that, that can help us make sense of all this uh, information. Also. Every every data source requires analytics to make informed decisions and you know obtain actionable insights. So with Azure, you get to maximize um, cost effectiveness and perform a source um, uh, 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 perform a secure migration with confidence. 
So moving on, we have the business application, which is one of my favorite, and uh, it's just uh, it's, it is a, an intelligent cloud application that you know unify constituent and fundraising management, um, program delivery, finance, being able to you know create your own different um, uh, application that will help you to you know maximize your programming outcomes and uh, help you to accelerate your mission. So I will quickly explain. Um, these uh, applications that fall on, under it. So we have the Dynamics 365. Um, so Dynamics 365 business application is a set of connected applications that is designed to transform and you know enable your core organizational activities, whether it's engaging with donors and um, your volunteers, connecting with beneficiaries and employees, or managing your finances. And also, not only does uh, Dynamics 5 combine um, this CRM and ERP capabilities, it also integrates your data and um, it integrates your business logic and other um, and other processes that you have in your organization. However, I know you'll be wondering what can, what exactly can this Dynamics 5 help you do. Okay, um, one of it is that it enables your staff productivity by seamlessly connecting organizational data with um office office three six five tools like um Outlook, Excel, Power BI, and the rest. It also you know aligns donor resources and volunteer skills to connect beneficiaries with the services and information they need the most. However, not only that, there are a lot of things that the administration five helps you to do. It also streamline your organizational operations from you know field to office and help you reduce costs. So moving on, we have another um, business application need. We have the financials. So we understand that non-profit organizations are under significant scrutiny and, are, and, and they are required to operate efficiently, you know, deliver results and comply with donor requirements. So um, Automating and modernizing financial operations is crucial for um, non-profit organizations, no matter the size, whether small or big. So smaller, less complex organizations can benefit from Dynamics 365 Business Central, while Dynamics 365 Finance is suitable for larger organizations. And by using these tools, uh, non-profit organizations can monitor their performance in real time, anticipate um, future outcomes, and make data-driven decisions to increase their impact. So we have um, the Microsoft Power Platform. So uh, this platform is an only one uh, local platform that covers multiple Microsoft services, which includes um, three, Office 365, Dynamics 365 that I mentioned, Azure, and some other independent applications. So it serves basically as the backbone of Microsoft um, business applications and um, it enables nonprofit like you to uh, get rid of manual processes and automate any specific process you desire. Maybe you want to build something internally to be able to help you um, uh, affect your mission. Um, Power Platform gives you that ability to do that. So using your creativity, you don't need to even have, um, it doesn't require extensive coding skills. So even non-developers can make use of it. It's just a, a simple drag and drop, um, drag and drop experience that you need for you to be able to create something that will you know, help you achieve your business goals. So. Moving on, um, we'll be talking, we'll be seeing some of these applications that that um, that is viewed on Power Platform or some of these business applications that can help you achieve your business goals. We'll be starting off with the Microsoft Community Training, and then um, that, uh, that particular application is basically for capacity building, and then we'll move on to the fundraising and engagement applications. And also, before I hand over uh, to my colleague Jennifer, I'd like to remind us that if you have any questions at all, any any um, clarification that you need, please use the uh, chat window, drop all your questions, and we'll do where to answer them. Over to you. Thank you so much. Good luck. And welcome, everybody, to, uh, to Microsoft for Nonprofit. So my name is Jennifer Ramona, and I'll be taking you guys through the Microsoft Community Training for Nonprofit. Uh, so Microsoft Community Training is available as a managed platform, as a service, as a service offering via Azure Marketing Plate. So the platform is free, but organizations will only bear the hosting and the consumption charges on Azure. So you can just easily deploy this in your subscription. The benefits of the MCT on your organization is that it will offer your organization with a personalized learning for a large mobile scale based community. It is 
affordable, easy to manage, provide robust security, as well as privacy protection. And for your learners, uh, the experience that they get from this platform is that it is optimized for mobile first and mobile only users. It is kept visual ease and simple. Users can access this uh, courses anytime, anywhere with any device. And then on our man on our MCT, we have your management portals. Your Management portals are designed on a role-based access and functions are available as per granted and permission management. So uh, on your management portal, you have your, your user roles that include your global admins. So your global admins, they are decision makers. They are so MCT is available as a managed platform as a service via Azure Marketing Place. The platform is free, like I said, so organizations will only bear the hosting and the consumption charges on Azure. So you can just easily go on and deploy this in your subscription. And then the benefits of MCT on your organization is that it provides a personalized learning for a large scale mobile community. It is affordable, easy to manage, and it provides robust security as well as privacy protection. And for your learners, the experience they get from this platform is that it is optimized for mobile first and mobile only users. It is kept virtual ease and simple. So, and also your users can also access courses anytime, anywhere using any device. And then from our part, from the portal, you have your management portal. So your management portal is designed on a role-based access and functions are available as per granted management permission. And then on your portal, you have your your global admin who are also known as decision makers that they are responsible for the overall execution and the success of the training program and then your organization admins they are a set of learners or administrators who have a particular purpose or who belong to a specific criteria uh, for example a job function and then you have your learning path admin so these ones they create learning path using uh, the courses that they have been assigned access to. And in your category admins, they create and manage all existing courses for a category that they also have been assigned access to. And then you have your course admins. So they manage and update content for only uh, the courses that they also have been assigned access to. And then we have our group admins. So these are also known as the grassroots level facilitators. They are responsible for, for the driver's learner's engagement and the adoption of the training program. So what they basically do, they take care of the onboarding of users, uh, the assigning of users and so forth. And then lastly, we have our learners who can only consume the content that you provide to them. And then the experience that your learners get from this platform is that they use this platform to check activities and to stay updated. They can also interact with their peers and expect to enable social learning. Uh, the platform can also be accessed on a web or and a mobile app. And lastly, before I take you guys to the demo, we have our analytics on the portal. So they provide insights that enable administrators to manage the progress and to improvise the training program. Uh, they also empower the organization to make informed decisions about their training program, which is of course influenced by the data and uh, the user's behavior. So we also have a role-based analytics. So these ones, they depend on the admin role so users will always have access to the relevant reports and the dashboards. And then the inbuilt analytics, they provide a rich out of box experience to admins by providing different views designed to facilitate the tracking of learners progress and the program monitoring at various level. You also have your platform architecture. So 
Once you have installed your MCT in your subscription, there is no need to maintain it or update, even to save us it. All this will be done for you automatically. Uh, we have your learner's endpoint, which you can integrate it with your Teams, your Android, your website, and you also have your admins uh, site. You also have your MCT, which will provide you with your updates, your alert, and your monitoring. And then lastly, we have your our REST APIs. So you can use your APIs to automate your flows and to build new capabilities onto the out-of-box features. So with the APIs, we can use the service to service authentication and obtain your access token programmatically, or you can use your authentication via tokens and obtain it um, manually. Now let's move on to the demo. So for you to get your MCT, you can just go straight to the Azure Marketing Place, or you can just go to the Microsoft Community Training Portal, go to Solutions, and then go to Industry, choose your nonprofit, and then click on Get It Now. The moment you click on Get It Now, it will take you straight to the Azure Marketing Place, and where you can click on Get It Now, uh, choose your license, and then click on Continue and then create your MCT. So by creating your MCT, you're gonna have to choose your subscription, uh, choose your resource groups, your application name, and all that. You also have uh, gonna have to set up your total, your website name, your organization, and your contact details. And then you're gonna have to also set up your login type. Your login type can be a mobile, a social account, regular school account, and then you can also add your admin, your organization admin number, and then you can go on, click create and deploy your MCT. Let me just take you to the look and feel of the portal. So from the management portal, you have access to view your courses, uh, your users, your analytics, and also your settings. And then when you got to courses, uh, you have your abilities to be to create your categories as well as courses. So your categories can be anything, can be a profession or a skill. And here we have an example of a profession, which is a hotel management. And you can also add your content. Your content can be your lessons also. Your admin, the admin is going to be managing that course and also all that. You can also in, enter your courses your quizzes also and your format your format can be a video a pdf a word and atc just any kind of format that you want you can also add your quizzes here and you can also align your lessons and how your learners and how you want your learners to be able to consume this course you also have the ability to view all this from your learner's point of view and here for example we have a learner's on learner's view on a mobile so you can view how this how your learners will be able to view your content you also have your branding so you can brand your mct you can add your logos you can add your colors and all that depending on how you uh, how you prefer your MCT to be, you can also view the changes that you made on the learner's uh, point of view. You can also add additional profile fields. It can be depending on what you want to know about your learners. It can be, for example, here we have designation. It can be gender and all that and all that interest depending on how you want to know more about your learners. You can also create groups from this portal. And by creating groups, you have to also add uh, users to those groups. And here, for example, we have a rule that if um, the user is from Delhi, enroll them into the marketing group. And here we have all the users from Delhi who are enrolled into the marketing team. And you can also assign courses to your groups as well as send announcements to those groups. And they can also view those announcements from the notice board. You also have uh, your analytics that we just talked about. Uh, these analytics will help you to make informed decisions. For example, you can view how many learners have been enrolled in a certain course and how many have completed in all those courses that the learners will prefer more than the others. You can also download your learners' report and 
I have a clear view of your Lumos um, brand. Anyway, moving on, before I get a hand over to Tony to take you through the fundraising engagement and the volunteer management, let's just look at the mobile app side. So when they click on your mobile app, you have the ability to sign in in the way that you've set up your portal to be signed in. It can be a mobile number, a work or school account, depending on how you have set it up. So they have the ability to view the courses that they have been enrolled in. And they have the ability to view your courses in any kind of format that you have uh, but you have posted them in and then you also have your notice board they can view all the announcement that you wanted to make uh, to them in groups and all that and then they also have the ability to view other courses that they can also involve themselves in that they might be interested in and then you have your notifications so the notification panel i they notify the learners about the updates that the mct have in the updates the alerts and all that so and then lastly your learners can also view content offline so for them to view the content offline they need to download this content so that they can uh, view them later offline and thank you so much and i'll be handing over to tony to take you through the fundraising and volunteer management thank you over to you tony good day everyone i am um Toby, and i'm a dynamic Services size expert and i'll be taking you on the fundraising and engagement demo and also the volunteer management um, demo um good luck please can you confirm if my screen is visible yes please your screen is up all right thank you very much so the fundraising and engagement solution is powered by Dynamic 365 and it involves the best practices for non-profit to solve the needs for non-profit organizations. So now let's look at the fundraising engagement um, solution. So let's take, for example, Alexa is a manager in a non-profit organization whose mission is focused on maternal health and vaccination. So now it is Monday morning, and Alexa wants to quickly get updates from the from the from the from the donation and the the organization activities. So now this can be this asking this can be overwhelming. So Alexa, she knows the best place for us to quickly get updates of the of the fundraising activities is the dashboard. So over here on the dashboard, we have the develop in the development overview. We have the recent major gifts received, which we have the name of the donors and the amounts. We have the recent gifts received greater than $5,000 with the primary um, gift by the primary designation. We have the primary designation here, and we also have the amount. Now here we have the opportunities in the current fiscal year. We have the donation by the opportunity managers. We have the opportunity managers and the, and the estimated revenue on this bar chart. So now over here, we have the open opportunities. So the, we have the open opportunities estimated revenue by phase which is from the first phase, the qualified phase, and the to the third phase, the closed phase, with the estimated revenue on this pie chart. Now here we have the gifts received greater than $5,000 gifts by month, and here we, give, we have over here the amount, and we have the gifts by month, and here. So now Alexa sees that a major, a major donor, a major donor just made a donation of this amount and she can see the name of the donor. So now she goes to the donor uh, contact and here you can see the information, the contact information of the donor where you have the name of the donor, the last name. And also we can also see the designation, the maternal health designation where you have the recurring gift. We have the last gift amount with the date and the amount. We also have the lifetime giving. We have the date and the amount. We have the membership of the donor. We have the major donation of the donor with the amount and the date. We also have the last and the first and last gift of the donor. So now over here, we have the supporting objective. This is these are other designation that the donor has also donated to. So we can see that the donor has, has donated to the health education, the Maratana health designation, the Tanzania global health designation. Now over here, we have the timeline. 
the timeline, this shows the activities between Alexa, which is the manager of the nonprofit organization, and the donor. So also you can order, also add other activities like your email, your phone call, the tag. So, so now the fundraising, the fundraising and engagement solution is also integrated with LinkedIn. So now we over here, we can see the, in, the the LinkedIn profile of the donor, where you can see the name of the of the donor. We can also see the 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 occupation of the of the donor. Now, Alexa, let's take for example, Alexa has a meeting during the day, and the meeting is, the meeting is going to be about the designation of the maternal health. So now Alexa wants to quickly get an update with the maternal health designation. So Alexa can quickly go over here to the dashboard and she goes to the designation, which is the maternal health designation. Now she can quickly see the recent maternal health gifts received. She can, she can see the book date, she can see the amount, you, you know, she can see the, the, the donor name, the primary designation, which is the maternal health. Now Alexa as the manager can also see the opportunity in the current fiscal year of the maternal health. You can see the donation by solicitors, these are the solicitors, also the amount. The open maternal health um, opportunities where you have the topic, you have the potential donor, the estimated close date, the estimated revenue, the contact, and the account. Now, if you can also the opportunities, in, the opportunities in the current fiscal year of the maternal health. Now, she can see the, the the estimated revenue and also the month um, estimated close date. Now, Alex has put together team members which their mission is focused on managing relationship between, uh, between um, the donors and the organization. So now this is an opportunity where the, the, the team member, which is the opportunity manager, manage relationship between the donor. So here we can see the uh, potential donor and over here we can see the opportunity manager. So now, and the, the fundraising and engagement solution is also integrated with Microsoft Teams. Like we all know, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams, yeah, Alexa can communicate with the opportunity manager, which is um, this opportunity manager on Microsoft Teams to get information on the donor and also on the, the, the donation of the, of the donor. So now in the fundraising and engagement um, application, we also have the campaign. So in the campaign, this you know, we, as we all know, campaign in the fundraising and engagement, um, fund, a campaign in non-profit organization is used to raise funds and also get more donors. And you know, in the non-profit organization where we have more donors, it leads to more donations. So over here, you can view all the campaigns and campaign templates. Here are the campaigns in the non-profit organization. We have the um, the templates. We have the um, status reason, proposed launch. We also have the created date. Also in the non-profit organization, Alexa can see all transactions. These are all the gifts received in non-profit organization where we have the book date, we have the amount, we have the donor, we have the donor names, and we have the primary designa designation which the donor has donated to. Also, we also have the donor commitment. Now this shows the active um, donor commitment where we can see all the um, commitment of the donors. We have the book date, the donor, we have the amount, we have the amount paid, we have the amount balance, the primary designation, which the donor has, has donated to, we have the originating campaign, the identifier and the um, status reason. We can also, in the, in the fundraising and engagement solution, we can also see the payment schedule. So this shows the active payment schedule. We have the book date also, the donor, we have the amount, the amount, we have the, um, the schedule um, type, we have the um, frequency, we also have the primary designation, the originating um, campaign. So now I'll be taking the I'll be taking you on the demo on the volunteer management solution. So now before we go before we go to the volunteer management solution, the volunteer management solution is also powered by Dynamic 365 and also is integrated with the portal. The portal is, is it can also can be integrated. It's also integrated with the organization website. So let's look at this um, volunteer, which is John Mitchell. So John Mitchell has participated in an engagement with a nonprofit organization, which the main focus 
is on land conservation and land reservation. So now, John Michel goes, you know, John Michel hears about an upcoming engagement in the organization. So now he goes to the web, the organization website, and now he goes to the to the portal. Now over in the portal, he signs in with his details. Now when he signs in with his details, you can see John Michel, you can see the contact information where you see he has filled in his first name, his last name, also his email, his address. And also in the portal, John Michel can also see, you can also see the preference and, and qualifications. So now you can see over here the his qualification type, over here the start date, the end date. Also, John Michel, John Michel can Jordan Michel can also see the the and he can also see other engagements that he has participated in. So now he hears about an upcoming engagement and he wants to he wants to apply for the upcoming engagement. So now over here you can see the organization has eleven upcoming engagements. So now he sees the invested species remover, which is interested in, and now if he goes to the details. Now he sees the details and the qualification, and he sees that he's qualified. Also, he sees the location of the upcoming engagement. Now, in the portal, he applies for the for the upcoming engagement. So now let's look at this dashboard. Vanessa, let's let's look at this. Let's look at Vanessa. Vanessa is a manager in a non-profit organization whose mission is focused on land conservation and land reservation. The same um, non-profit organization that John and that Jordan Michel has um, participated in upcoming engagement. So now Vanessa now goes to the does wants to get updates in the nonprofit organization engagement. So now she knows that the best place for us to get the update is the dashboard. So over here she can see the she can see the published engagement. She can also see the volunteer participation in review. She can also see the engagement in in the in, in draft. So here we have the um, engagement opportunities. Now Vanessa wants to get updates of the upcoming engagement, which is the invasive um, species removal. So now she goes to the invasive species removal engagement. Here you can see the summary. We have the volunteers for the morning shift, the volunteers for the evening shift, and also the volunteers um, application that needs to be reviewed. So now she goes to the participants. Here over here, the, she can see in the participant, participant, she can see the contact, those are the volunteer names, and also the participation status. So John Mitchell, which Jordan Mitchell, which has applied for the invasive species removal, now she can see that she can see that John Mitchell, Jordan Mitchell participation status needs to be reviewed, which he, which he initially applied from the um from the portal. So here we also have the activities between uh, Alexa, which is the manager of the nonprofit organization, and other volunteers, and other volunteers. So now also she sees that John John Jordan Mitchell has applied for the invasive species removal engagement, and now she wants to see jo Jordan Mitchell's information. So now she goes to Jordan Mitchell's in information, where she can see the contact information, which is the same as the one. In the portal, you can see the his email. Also, you can also see the timeline between Vanessa, the the manager of the, the volunteer management organization, uh, the nonprofit organization, and the volunteer. You can also see the um, um the recent engagement, which you can see that Jordan Michel has applied for the invasive species removal. So also, she can also see the qualifications and preference of John um, of Jordan Michel, where you can see his qualification type. And also its preference over over here. Now also we also in the volunteer management solution we also have the onboarding onboarding where we have the new applicants. So now Vanessa can see the new the new applicants and the, the active pending participation where she can see volunteers that that volunteers that have applied for different um, upcoming engagement where she can see the invasive species removal, the engagement opportunities. She can see Jordan Mitchell's name over here, his email, and his um, business phone number, his contact details. Then also in the volunteer management solution, we have the active onboarding process. We have the qualification type. We have the contact, the pending status, the the type, the current stage. Also, so um, we can see that the the fundraising engagement and the volunteer management. With the leverage of AI capabilities, it makes nonprofit organizations make better forecasting 
and also it makes non-profit organization makes reports and also for decision making and for the best and 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 quick decision making thank you so i'll be holding over the session back to good luck thank you all right um thank you uh tony thank you jennifer um for that wonderful demonstration so um at this point we should be having some questions however some of the questions have been answered in the group chat um please if you have any question, please feel free to use the chat window to drop all your questions. So we'll give like um, a minute or two for us to be able to attend to our questions. Please make use of the chat window. Thank you. OK, so there's a question in the group chat um, from. OK, um, first of all. Um, Hussaini, he said, how can we assess the portal? I've shared um, a link. I'll also share the link so that you can be able to access the portal and um, do and register. So here's the link to um, register. So um, Rai, sorry, I don't know if I pronounced it down very well. Okay, you said um, we have recently gotten the Microsoft offer for Business Basic and the Microsoft Business Premium. 10 donated licenses for free through TechSoup. Unfortunately, we just received a mail from a, a couple of days back saying the business Microsoft um, basic and the business premium will now attract a minimal of $1 per user per month. Is there a reason why we are being asked to start paying for this software, knowing too well that um, knowing to where that a lot of us are working through within a really dead resources. So um, I'll be handing over to Tony to give us insight into that. Right, so oh, um, yes, yes, sorry about that. So I'm trying to, okay, um, hello, Anjiko. I hello, <laughs> good to have you on the call. I tried to um, introduce it earlier on when the business model, but um, we weren't available. So um, over to you. Okay, thank you so much. Good luck. Um, um, apologies, I was not able to join in time. Um, I was a bit held up, but I'm glad to see um, the, the the webinar went quite very well. Um, I, just, I just wanted to chime in to the question around the 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 mail, the question that um, Ria um, asked about. Eh? So, so the the licensing, the licensing from uh, the business big basic licensing and business premium are granted licenses from Microsoft. Eh? Of course, uh, we work with the, the partner ecosystem, Microsoft technology partners such as Reliance, as well as TechSoup to be able to deliver these services to the ground um, and to nonprofits in different countries. Eh? So the different partners have different you know, um, um, support mechanisms um, and TechSoup are, support, are, charge, are beginning to charge uh, for support um, of those licensing going forward. It doesn't mean that the license is charged from Microsoft, but they are charging for uh, you know supporting you to be able to continue to use those licenses eh? um you can you can choose um to go forward uh with continue to use the services of TechSoup or you can look for a different partner um to you know handle this uh support for you um some of them are charged some of them some of them are not eh? so it's 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 possible to get a partner who doesn't charge for the support support of it maybe they just charge for the deployment eh? or they will continue to work with you with other products um, um, where there's opportunity to scale into it and so provide you the support for free for um, for the, the business premium or the business basic that they already have. Eh? So um, th that's that's how to handle that situation. Eh? You can continue the services of um, TechSoup and they you, they charge you um, or you can try and look for another partner who's able to provide you that support for free. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So there are more questions and um, I believe uh, since you're here, let's uh, deal with it. So the other one says, how much does the CRM cost per month? Like um, how much does the CRM cost per month for nonprofit organizations? Okay, okay. 
Thank you. Good luck. So for for um, the the dynamics CRM licensing, eh? Um, what you require uh, the dynamics? It's it's sales. It's called the license. It's called dynamic sales enterprise um, license, uh, where we give uh, five uh, five granted licenses for free, totally for free, for you to start using as a non-profit organization. And then for any additional user um, above the five, eh? uh, it's we, you get it at a discounted price, I think it's $20, $23.80 uh, yes. per month eh, per user. Eh? Um, that's that, that's a price of, that's the recommended retail price. Um, different partners may quote differently, um, but because we work together with Reliance, um, that's the recommended re retail price they'll be able to offer each uh, to you. Eh? Um, and just note that this is discounted because the actual price, um, the actual price of it, I think is about, is about the commercial price for it is about sixty dollars, eh? So you get it at uh, you know almost uh, seventy per, uh, between between um, I think sixty and seventy percent discounted. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> so we have the next question. It said, "Is payments made for each staff that will use the platform, or payments made for the organization as a whole?" So that's coming from Boma. OK, so the, it, it depends on the product uh, that you're licensing. If you're con con considering the CRM license, eh, this is per user, per user who's using the platform. Eh? It does not have to have to be the entire organization. Eh? It's just the users who, who need um, access to the fundraising and engagement module, eh? whether it's the fundraiser um, or gift manager, the people who actually need to handle um, management of fundraising and engagement are the ones who are licensed on the platform and they are, they're the only ones who are charged eh? um yeah not it's not an it's not a um an enterprise wide um license eh? um however there are some licenses which are actually tenant based eh? we usually instead of calling them enterprise based we call them tenant based um like dynamics marketing eh? uh dynamics marketing which enables personalized um in workflow engagement of donors um is a tenant based license at about 275 dollars per month eh? and it it uh, uh, you can have a maximum number of users on the on on that tenant accessing the environment. Okay, thank you very much. So there's another question from Toyin. Um, it says, does the CRM link to local bank um payment accounts or they are all based on data inputs? So uh, for the CRM platform, uh, the fundraising and engagement platform, integration is required uh, to different payment platforms. Eh? Um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a lot of work that the partners need to do to be, enable that integration, eh? but it is possible across multiple um, integration platforms. Like um, I think we have done integrations in the past um to okay we've done them even in africa eh? uh, to some of the common uh payment gateways uh and it's possible okay so um thank you very much there's another question though this one is pertaining to us it's, uh, it's asking do you provide additional training on how to use the platform for the non-profit to sign up so um rejoice we can have one-on-one -on -one session to walk you through how to how you can you know have um, access to this platform and be able to make use of it so i dropped um an email for you to send us reach out, reach out to us we will schedule a session with you have a one-on-one -on -one session on that and we can walk you through all the processes and the levels that um you need for this sign up and for this platform so i don't know uh, please can you um so um there's a question said is this is the portal used for um is it free for the non-profit organizations um hello Anjiko. um so there's a question oh. though it's yeah i said is the oh. portal used for um free is it free for the non-profit organizations yeah so so um the so the portal the application portal for validation um, as a non-profit, of course, that is available to you to put in their details and get validated. And then once you, if you get validated and confirmed as a non-profit, um, usually within two weeks, um, you do get access to the portal for free. Yeah? Um, they are, um, and the portal explains to you exactly what is granted, uh, what is discounted. And of course, you work together in collaboration with a partner such as Reliance to be able to get you access to those licensing either on a granted SKU or a discounted uh, or a discounted SKU. Eh? Um, some of the licenses don't have grants and, uh, uh, and are discounted. Uh, some of them uh, do not have also um, 
do not even have discounted like the micro uh, like the dynamics marketing eh, platform but you do get access to the you know the information around what you can get and what you can't um once you get validated okay um thank you very much so um i think in the absence of any other questions um to have a to have a great day